If you're taking the series 63, 65, or 66 exams, you're very likely to come across questions that ask you about whether a broker-dealer, an agent of a broker-dealer, an investment advisor, or an investment advisor representative would need to register in a given state. When you come across one of these questions, there is a certain thought process that you should go through in order to answer the questions. And so we're gonna run through that thought process here, um, the thought process for broker dealers and agents first, then investment advisors and investment advisor reps, and then we'll look at a question that sort of gets at um, using that thought process. So first off, when you have a question that asks you about a broker dealer or an agent who works for a broker dealer and whether they would need to register in a given state, there are two questions you should ask yourself. The first question, does the broker dealer or agent have an office in the state? Okay, so you ask this question. If the answer is yes to this question, they do have an office in the state, they must register in the state. If the answer is yes, you don't have to ask the second question. But if the answer is no, they don't have an office in the state, then there is a second question at that point that you need to ask. So let's look at what that second question is. The second question is, does the broker dealer or agent have any non-institutional clients in the state? So any retail clients in the state? If the answer is yes, they must register However, if the answer is no, they don't need to register. So they do not register. Okay, so you have a question. It says ABC broker dealer has offices in states A and B, does not have an office in state C, but it has non-institutional clients there. So you follow this thought process. Do they have an office in the state? If yes, they register. If no, you ask the second question. Do they have any non-institutional clients in the state? If yes, they must register. If no, they don't need to register. Now, let's look at same deal for investment advisor and investment advisor reps. Do they need to register in a state? So you get a question prompt that asks you about an investment advisor or investment advisor rep, gives you some information about them. You ask yourself these questions, okay? The first question, does the IA or IAR have an office in the state? Answer is yes, they must register. If the answer is no, you've got a second question to ask. And let's look at that second question. Now, the second question is a little bit different from the second question for broker dealers or agents. For investment advisor, is in the wraps, it's has the investment advisor or investment advisor rep had more than five non institutional clients? during the past 12 months. Okay, so, so remember for uh, broker dealers and their agents, it's do they have any non-institutional clients? For investment advisors and their reps, have they had more than five of them non-institutional clients during the past 12 months? So if the answer here is yes, then they must register. Okay, if the answer is no, they don't need to register. They do not register. So remember what, what this means is if, the, if they've had like one or two or three or four or five during the past 12 months and they don't have an office in the state, they don't need to register. Once they get over that, that five, that number of five, um, they would need to register. So to start IA's IAR's first question, do they have an office in the state? If yes, they register. If no, you ask the second question, have they had more than five non-institutional clients in the state during this past 12 months? If yes, they must register. If no, they don't need to register. Now, let's look at a question. Um, so this, this is a type of question that you might see on a test. This is actually not an easy question. There's a lot of things going on in here. So we're not starting you off with the most basic sort of uh, low hanging fruit. We're actually giving you a question that there's there's quite a thing, few things to, to think about. Let's read through it here. XYZ broker dealer has his main office in state A. It also has offices in states B and C. XYZ has three non-institutional clients in state B, and it only has institutional clients in state C. It does not have an office in state D, and it has three institutional clients and doesn't have any, any non-institutional clients there. In which states does XYZ need to register? Okay, um, so 
A, state A only, B, states A and B only, C, states A, B, and C only, or D, states A, B, C, and D. So let's run through this state by state, okay? So let's look at state A first. All right, so remember, what's the first question you ask yourself? Does the broker dealer have an office in the state? Right off the bat, has its main office in state A? The answer is yes. The answer to that question is yes, it registers in state A. Register in A. Okay, so we register in A. What about B? It also has offices in states B and C. So we just knocked states B and C right out right there. It just told you it has offices in states B and C. So it registers in state B, it registers in state C. So it registers in B and it registers in C. All right, so now let me move this down just a bit here. Um, let's look at D. Okay, so D, it says here, it does not have an office in state D. So the, the answer to the first question is no. That first question, does it have an office? But now we need to move to that second question. Remember what the second question is, does it have any non-institutional clients in the state? So it says they have three institutional clients, but it says it does not have any non-institutional clients. So the answer to question one is no, and the answer to question two, does it have any non-institutional clients in the state, is also no. Um, you get that double no answer, that means it does not need to register in D. Okay, so we've got registers in A, registers in B, registers in C, does not register in D. So the correct answer to this question is states A, B, and C only. All right, so you follow the thought process, you run through each of the states that are mentioned, ask those questions, you get your answer. C is the right answer. As I said, this is not the easiest question, but it is a type of question that you might see on the test. Um, um, so just follow the recommendation and you can get even a question like this one correct.